Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're writing line of business or enterprise software, one of the best skills I think you can have as a developer isn't technical. Rather, it's understanding how the business you're in works. One of the ways that I found you can really gain this understanding is kind of following the flow of money through your system. Let me explain. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So I was recently a guest on the Azure DevOps podcast with Jeffrey Palermo, and I made the comment how kind of the biggest influence or mentor in my career was an accountant, not actually anybody technical. And that's what, the, what this is really about, is that kind of really changed my thought process about how I thought about a large system and how it was decomposed. So at a very high level, there's actually two things that I'm usually thinking of when I'm thinking about how money flows through a system and how it's gonna be decomposed. The first is revenue. I'm thinking about revenue. How does the company I'm working for and the software that we're making, how does it ultimately generate revenue? And the second piece of that is the other side of the equa equation is what is the cost that we're incurring to try to generate that revenue? Like what's the direct cost for generating that revenue? So these are the kind of the two high level things that I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about how money flows, money going in and money going out. So on the revenue side, we generally have some customers, list the customers that we have in our system. So that's represented by the CRM. Then we have some type of sales process and how we generate orders or sales, whatever the case may be, depending on the system that we're in. And then from there, we invoice our customer to actually get payment from them. So at a simplistic point of view, we have customers, we have sales, we invoice them. That's kind of our revenue side as an example. So on the cost side, there's a couple different ways we can think of this. The first is being time. If we have employees that are doing work, whether they're salary or time-based, doesn't really matter. We have some type of timesheet that's keeping track of time. And then from there, we have whatever our payroll pay periods are, we pay those employees. But the work that they're doing is directly correlated to the revenue that we're trying to that we're generating. So we have a direct cost against revenue. Another way of looking at this could be that we have subcontractors or goods or services that we need to purchase from outside vendors. So we have vendors that we're purchasing from that we need to basically pay them and get receipts for. But again, this is cost that's directly related to revenue. So let's use the example here of project-based work. And you can use yourself as the example, let's say that you are a software developer that's in consultancy or you're a consultant. So you're doing project-based work because you have a customer where you sell them on a software project and you wanna invoice them. You have potentially maybe subcontractors or other employees or licenses that you need to buy from outside vendors. And so that's your outgoing, that's the cost. But the real magic of where most of this actually works is in the middle. And there's two things in project-based work, as an example, that ties all this together. And that's what we're missing here. And that is the execution. It's operationally. And that's where I see most of the systems actually being developed generally in kind of line of business that are running systems is in the actual execution. Um, and that is really what's joining kind of the revenue side in the cost side. Now I'm talking pretty high level here. If you want me to create a video that's way more detailed about a specific domain, such as manufacturing or transportation, I can do so. So let me know in the comments. So if we're thinking about a software project, that means the actual execution is our actual project, which I have highlighted here in the middle. That means we have customer that goes through some type of sales boundary, then it's the sales process. That could be that there's estimates, quotes, et cetera, that ultimately turns into some type of sales order that kicks off our execution operationally, which is a project. We have different employees potentially that are working on this project that have time sheets that are associated to those, and we have payroll for pay periods. So that's actual incurred costs directly against the revenue that we're trying to generate. And like I said, as well as we have purchase orders from outside vendors that we are buying software licenses for, cloud providers, et cetera, that are direct costs to that revenue. And from there, eventually, once our project completes, or depending on the terms, we invoice and generate our revenue. So in my experience, when working on systems, I often mention kind of the core of the actual business that we're working in, 
And it usually is that. In project work, it actually is this operationally, this execution. So I kind of have these labeled a little bit differently here. And it's because you may work in a system where you're only providing kind of one of these boxes because the entirely can be very complex. So if you're developing a system where you're focused on the actual execution of a project, basically writing project management software, then something like CRM, you don't necessarily need to write. Maybe you integrate with some external CRM product. Great. Maybe the sales process you don't want to integrate with and you basically develop that a part of your system. And that's one part of the boundary within your system. And again, at that core, maybe that's where the project is contains the most complexity of your entire system. Same thing with the timesheets. Maybe you develop that, but the employees and kind of the HR portion of it with payroll and employees, maybe that's dealt with completely separate and you integrate with something third party for that. So again, you can see kind of these um, outside boxes are more so in kind of a supporting role. But again, the focus, the real heart of it, that project, that execution operationally, in my experience, when you're working with these types of systems, this is where the heart, the real heart of the system is that you're trying to really try to build because that's where a lot of the complexity lies. So what this means for project-based work is we're thinking that there is a start and an end really. We can kind of think of that as we have some type of sales process and once we complete that, we go into some type of operational work, the actual execution, and this is where we're incurring our cost. Once that work is complete, that's why we actually generate our revenue by creating an invoice and having our customer pay us. Now, what's interesting with project-based work is it doesn't need to end, and there couldn't be this feedback loop between one project to another. And that means that when you're incurring costs because you're executing, you're operationally doing the work that's incurring the cost, once you actually complete that work and you see, okay, this is what we made, this is kind of the margins that we made, you can relate that back to the, the, the sales cycle of the next project that you're selling to understand, okay, are we gonna make what we think we're going to make? There can be this feedback loop that helps you after a project is done, or even when the project's happening, to understand what you're doing next. Now, another example of this is just could be physical goods that you sell. So you have the same type of concept. We have two kind of distinct ends here. We have sales where we ship out our orders, then we invoice our customer. We purchase product goods from outside vendors. We receive those into our warehouse and then have a receipt, which is again, is direct cost of goods sold against the revenue that we're trying to generate. So even though project-based work and something like this is completely separate, you can see that in the middle, I kind of have this boundary of shipping and receiving because again here, this is a lot of times where complexity lies. And if you're building a system, again, CRM and vendor may be more generic and you don't actually create that within the system, you actually use that as more of a supporting role and use something external. I've written line of business for accounting, distribution, manufacturing, transportation, and they all have this in common, which is you need to understand kind of the flow of money for revenue and costs. At the heart of that generally is the execution and the operationally how that gets done. That's usually where the comp complexity generally lies. Now, as I mentioned, maybe you're not developing that portion of the system. Maybe you are generating kind of the supporting role. Maybe it's a payroll system, or maybe it's kind of the pay sheets, or maybe you're developing CRM, and there is a lot of complexity all within those. So even though you're not developing kind of that operational part, you're developing somebody's supporting role that somebody else is gonna be integrating into, it helps that you understand where you fit in this puzzle. Because if you do, you'll be able to better provide a better service or product and how people are gonna integrate with you. Thank you to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. They've been joining more and more onto my private Discord server to ask questions to each other about software architecture and design. They'll get access to all the source code I show in any videos. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.